Welcome, everyone. Um, we're so happy you're here. My name is Jessica Leach, and I am the coordinator for the SPEAK project at the University of Texas at Arlington. And we, along with the team at Voting is Social Work, are so happy that you could join us to learn a little bit more about our organizations and our new collaborative project, the Why Vote Campaign Toolkit. So first, I'm going to hand it over to Dr. Rick Hofer. He is the director of SPEAK and a professor at the School of Social Work here at the University of Texas at Arlington. He is internationally known for his work on advocacy, social policy, and nonprofit management with over eight books and 70 articles uh, on this topic. So today he will connect for us the work of SPEAK in promoting civic engagement and the Why Vote Initiative. Thank you very much, Jessica, for that introduction. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you to everyone who has joined us today. Uh, SPEAK uh, is the Social Policy Education, Advocacy, and Knowledge Organization. And we want to acknowledge the generous support of the Simmons Sisters Fund at Texas Women's Foundation. And we also have an acknowledgement of where the land came from uh, for the University of Texas at Arlington. It's a, it's a rather long statement, but uh, we also want to acknowledge that um, many of the buildings in Arlington, Texas were the result of uh, the work of enslaved peoples. And we acknowledge that and, and uh, provide this acknowledgement to all those who came before. So voting is social work, is one half of the collaboration, and speak is the other. I'm Dr. Rick Hofer, and I'm just raring to go here. So let's get moving. So what's the big idea behind speak? This is a brand new program started just last February. And so we, we, uh, we're very happy that we're moving along here. The big idea behind SPEAK is that democracy requires participation in self-governance by the largest number of people in the population as possible. That's our underlying philosophy. This is called civic engagement, that participation. And SPEAK is designed to increase the levels of civic engagement among social workers and their allies, particularly starting at the School of Social Work at UT Arlington, but uh, obviously with ripple effects moving out. So you might be asking, well, what is civic engagement? Some examples are voting, doing good deeds in the community on your own or with other organizations, attending protests, speaking at hearings uh, at, about policies and many other things. And so that's what we mean by civic engagement. And why is civic engagement important? It's important because it ensures that government serves the people who are involved and not the other way around. So when only a small group, perhaps of elites or moneyed people, uh, are the only ones who engage, then that leaves out everyone else who maybe doesn't have access to those same resources. So we are about enlarging the number of people, the proportion of people, or civically engaged. And so really, what do we want to achieve with SPEAK? Well, the way that we like to say it in the shortest way possible is SPEAK wants to amplify the voice of social workers and policy makers. And we do this in many ways. For example, we provide resources for students, such as research assistantships, field placements, and a skills lab training in relevant skills. We have special outreach effort to veterans, and we're conducting research on the influences of families on civic engagement. By knowing these things, we'll be able to expand our ability to influence those variables. We want to share our approach with other colleges and universities, and we do this through presentations at professional conferences and informal uh, consultations. We assist students in networking and finding, and finding resources outside of UTA. In fact, our intense collaboration with voting and social work began this way and is continuing with today's presentation. 
We're really thrilled to have this going on. We decided that voting is an important way to amplify our voices as social workers. So it only made sense to link up with voting in social work and the great efforts that they had uh, underway. So here's a little trivia question. What percent of voting eligible young Americans voted in the 2022 US presidential election? Think about what your answer would be. And ding, here it is. 55%, that's just barely over half. And so we're really, uh, we're focusing on people of college age and uh, hoping that we can increase this percent. Now it's interesting because we had a baseline survey among our students in the School of Social Work to answer, to ask some of these same questions. So for example, what percentage of our respondents always vote in elections? Well, this may surprise you given that 55% of the people of that young adult age, but we had 43% of our respondents at UTA say that they always vote in elections. We wanna increase that. And we had questions about what their plans were for the future. Well, it's interesting that not so many just uh, not so many actually voted in the last election, but 92% plan to vote in the future in state or local elections. And an additional, or, or the 94% said that they're going to vote in future federal elections. So that means about 50% of our respondents did not vote in 2020, but they plan to in the future. We want to make sure that, that they do that. We also ask why they don't vote. And this red uh, object here is the largest one. It's about 50%. And they say that the reason that they don't, uh, didn't vote was I don't know where to start. So this is a matter of not willingness, but of knowledge. And so speak and voting in social work are seeking to give them the knowledge so they know where to start, how to start, and and all of the things that they need to do. Now, this question was, do you consider yourself well qualified to participate in politics? And 27% said, well, not really. No, 27% said yes, mostly. And 10% said yes, very much. But all these other, all the rest of the people were some shade of no, not really. So. We want, again, as speak, to increase these percentages on the lower end. Speak is delighted, and I and personally and everyone on the team is delighted to work with multiple school and social work organizations to increase voting and other civic engagement opportunities for social workers. Our belief is that together we can do so much. Now, there are some next steps I'd like to ask for your help with. And one is we want you to sign up for our contact list so you can hear directly from us. This, will, uh, this URL will be available, but it's, um, it's where you can enter your email address and get occasional emails from Speak about voting and other civic engagement activities. We'd also love it if you take our survey. Even if you're not from UTA, we're collecting uh, student voices, student responses um, from across the country. And, and you'll, you'll tell us which university you're at so we can uh, keep everybody straight. And then we'd like you to check out our website, which is at, the UT, uh, at UTA, so you can see even more what we're up to. And so thank you. And with that, I'm going to stop my sharing and I want to introduce the next speaker, Mimi Abramovitz, who is truly a legend in the field of social work. She didn't say that. I've got some things that she did tell me to say, and that wasn't one of them. That's a personal observation. She is a Bertha Kappen Reynolds Professor of Social Policy at the Silberman School of Social Work, Hunter College, and the CUNY Graduate Center. She's often introduced as an activist and a scholar. And so, Mimi Abramovitz, she is indeed an activist and a scholar. Her research interests include US welfare state, poverty, inequality, 
activism, and the impact of public policy on human service organizations, all viewed through the lens of race, class, and gender. She's very well published with uh, Ed, uh, five books or more and dozens and dozens of articles in journal, professional journals. She's received at least 15 awards. I mean, after a while you stop counting, um, but the most recent are the Columbia University School of Social Work Hall of Fame and CSWE's Significant Lifetime Achievement Award. Along with Terry Mizrahi, she co-leads the National Social Work Voter Mobilization Campaign, better known as Voting is Social Work. She works with a special commission to advance macro practice, influencing social policy, and is an associate editor of the very important forthcoming Encyclopedia of Macro Social Work. So it's my honor to be involved with this with Mimi and the others. So Mimi, take it away. Rick, thank you for that lovely introduction. I too am looking forward to working with you and speak and your whole team on mobilizing the social work community to vote, to register to vote. I work with the National Social Work Voter Mobilization Campaign, popularly known as Voting is Social Work. Terry Mizrahi and I co-lead this. Our campaign goals are to mobilize voters and to promote civic engagement. We mobilize faculty, students, field work directors, and field instructors to register clients and constituents to vote, especially those targeted by voter suppression and gerrymandering laws. We promote ongoing civic engagement in social work education and the community. Our campaign has been endorsed, we are happy to say, and proud by all the major social work organizations. The hub of our campaign are the school's field placements. Why? Because social work serves some 12 million clients every day, but only 22% vote. We have our work cut out for us. Our communication center is our website, votingissocialwork.org. There you will find resources, webinars, voting guides, articles, class and field assignments, and much, much more for students, faculties, agencies, practitioners, and the community. And you will also find free access to the entire Why Vote toolkit. So why mobilize social workers? Why use them? Why vote vote? Why are we doing all this? There are six reasons why voting is social work. First, it's the right thing to do. Second, voting brings benefits to individuals. Individuals who vote have better health, mental health, and employment outcomes, according to many research studies. Communities with higher voter turnout benefit from more resources from elected officials. And the profession increases social work's voice and visibility and power when lots of social workers vote. Reason three, we are in the right place. Social workers, we sit at the intersection of the individual and society, as you can see from this picture. We are well positioned to register all those people we see but who do not vote. And we are prepared to promote voter edu civic education. Reason four, we fought hard to get the vote. The suffrage movement won the vote for women around 1919, and the civil rights movement won the vote for persons of color around 1960. Much blood was shed and many lives were lost. We gotta keep it going. Reason five, voting supports the mission and social justice values of social work. Both NASW's code of ethics and CSWD's uh, practice competency number five, encourage social workers to engage in social and political action and to work for social change. Reason six, the guardrails of US democracy have been shaken. Years of racial, religious and class divides have polarized our society as you know, and fuel the distrust in government that threatens our democracy. The British magazine called The Economist developed something called the Democracy Index in 2006. The DI ranks 167 countries from zero to 10 and places them in one of four categories, 
full or flawed democracy, hybrid regime, and then all the way to an authoritarian regime, which is where we don't want to be. In 2006, the US was ranked as a full democracy. In 2016, we fell to a flawed democracy. And in 2020, we fell even further on the flawed democracy scale. This is not good. In 2020, we ranked 25th on this uh, democracy scale, lower than Canada and the United Kingdom. An embarrassment. But, and this is really important, what has been done can be undone. Given that, what can social workers do? You can speak out. Your vote is your voice, so be heard. You can register people to vote as if your life and democracy depended on it. In 2020, 80 million people, or 33% of the eligible voters, stayed home, despite this being the highest voter turnout since 1900 or in 120 years. Most people, 62%, say they were never asked to register. You can make a difference. Ask people if they have been asked to vote, to register to vote, and then tell them how. Voting is a human right. Voting is power. You can also support fair policies and inclusive social policies. This means you can fight voter suppression. History reveals and current policies actively are promoting voter suppression. I'm sure you know all about this. But you may not know that to date, 49 states have introduced 400 laws to suppress the vote. Why? Well, voter suppression is designed, intended to demoralize the electorate, to make people believe that voting does not matter, that the system is rigged, and that their vote does not count. This cannot stand. So we need to support fair vote social policies, such as the mail-in voting, ranked choice voting, automatic voter registration, ex-offender enfranchisement, make national voting days a work holiday, early voting, campaign finance reform, and most of all, we, we need to, or I should say in addition, we have to stop all voter suppression. You can also, last but not least, fight for social change. Don't mourn, organize. Dream, vote, organize. And never forget, voting is the most basic right in our democracy. Voting is more important today than ever before. And you can be part of the solution. You can use the Why Vote Toolkit, and you can be part of history. Join the National Voter Mobilization Campaign. Thank you. And now we're going to meet Ariel, who designed the Why Vote Campaign Toolkit. Ariel is a macro social worker concentrating in advocacy and social policy practice. She works diligently to advance social justice and promote equality for all people, especially the vulnerable and the oppressed. Ariel just graduated from the M with an MSW from the University of Texas at Arlington. Congratulations, Ariel. Welcome to the profession. And here she specialized in community and administrative practice. During her last semester, when Ariel was um, when Ariel was uh, interned with Speak, she partnered with Voting as Social Work to develop the Why Vote Toolkit that you're about to hear more about. Ariel is a passionate advocate for voting rights for all people. She hopes and we believe that the Why Vote Toolkit that she designed, the student-led Why Vote Toolkit, will help social workers register hundreds of people to vote. Thank you, Mimi. Uh, we are really excited that you're joining us today to learn more about our Why Vote campaign. As Mimi said, um, and as we've said, given that social workers sit at the intersection of the individual and society, we're really well positioned to help promote civic engagement and help preserve our nation's democracy. And one of the best ways that we can engage in civics and promote, promote a healthy democracy is by registering people to vote. So the Why Vote campaign was designed with these things in mind. We wanted to create a tool for social workers to make it easier to empower their communities by helping them get registered to vote. 
And so today we'll discuss the ideas behind the Why Vote campaign, the different aspects of the campaign, and the ways that you can use the campaign toolkit in your current position as a student, as an educator, or as a working professional. But before we jump in, I wanted to say thank you to Voting as Social Work. Um, this tool is compiled using some of the already existing resources available through Voting as Social Work. And so I wanted to say thank you for, to them for allowing us to build off of and add to their work. And so with that, let's get into the Why Vote campaign. So research says that so social workers are more civically engaged than the average person, but many social workers admit that they don't see political participation as a part of their duties as a social worker. They may participate in advocacy on an individual level when working with individual clients, but that seems to be where their advocacy and policy practice end. And voting is such an important part of civic engagement for social workers. Not only is it an essential function of our democracy, but it's also a tool of empowerment that can be influential in the lives of our clients and our communities. Voter registration is a simple way for social workers to incorporate civic engagement into their daily lives. And this campaign is intended to jumpstart social workers' involvement in this work during their educational careers so that after they graduate, they feel more prepared, more inspired, and more qualified to continue the work and the effort in their professional life. The campaign's meant to be an eight-week advocacy project for social work students around why voting matters. And this eight-week campaign guides students toward the final aspect of the campaign, which is hosting their own voter registration drive. So throughout the development of this campaign, we kept a few things in mind. The first is we, we wanted the campaign goal to be uh, preparing and inspiring social work students to advocate for the importance of voting, but also empowering social work students to become more civically engaged. We used three main objectives to accomplish our goal. The first is we wanted to provide resources to social work students to kickstart their commitment to political social work and civic engagement through their participation in the campaign and the voter registration drive. The second was that we wanted the campaign to educate social work students on the importance of voting to their clients and their communities. And then lastly, we wanted the campaign to educate social work students on the importance of voting to the social work profession. And so, as we've said, the first objective of the campaign was to give social work students education around the importance of voting to the profession. And to do this, we incorporated the following concepts into the materials within the campaign. The first is that voting is essential to the social work profession because we're electing leaders that have direct impacts on our local and national policies, which as we know, have direct impacts on our clients and our communities. The second is that through social workers' involvement in the voting process, we're able to help create a more inclusive and representative government, which will have many positive impacts on our communities. Third, through voting, social workers are able to hold our leaders accountable to upholding our social work values. We need to be able to use our vote to ensure that our local and national leaders are upholding our values. And then lastly, Voting is important to the social work profession because we're electing local leaders who have direct impacts on our communities through the decisions that they make around infrastructure, education, community resources, city budget, community values, and community culture. The second objective of the campaign was to educate students on the importance of voting to their clients and their communities. And to do this, we again incorporated certain ideas into the campaign materials. So we emphasize the importance of voting to our clients and communities as it gives the individual equal voice, self-determination and power, which improves their individual well-being. It also gives people the opportunity to have meaningful participation in the decision-making process in their community. As we know, our vote is our voice. And so when we give everyone the right to vote, we're giving them equal voice within their community. And when we encourage our clients and communities to vote, we know that this action will actually advance other types of civic engagement within the community, which only serves to better our communities and helps us to get a better sense of social justice. 
and the last objective of the campaign is to provide students with the resources that they'll need to ready themselves as they kickstart their commitment to political social work and civic engagement. Which brings us to the meat and potatoes of today's presentation, which is our Book campaign toolkit. The campaign is designed as a downloadable toolkit and it is a downloadable zip file with everything we need to participate in the campaign. You can find it at votingsocialwork.org and we'll drop that link in the chat for easy access. The toolkit is made up of two main components, the campaign guide and the campaign materials. So we'll start by looking at the campaign guide. The campaign guide was designed to help students better participate in the campaign. It's a step-by-step -step guide on how to participate and then compile the toolkit materials into modules for each week's activities. So here you can see a sample of the first few pages of the campaign guide. And then it moves into the weekly modules, which first give a brief description of the suggested activities to complete during that week, and then gives students a pro tip for the week. These pro tips were created to be best practices of the campaign, and so there's one pro tip for each week. You can also see that each week in the guide has references of what materials are needed to complete that week's activities. And all the materials in the campaign are organized in the zip file by week that you've downloaded so that they're easily found and utilized. The campaign materials include flyers, brochures, posters, worksheets, checklists, and additional resources. Here you can see one of the flyers that's included the voter registration drive checklist and the evaluation form that students can do after they've completed the campaign. A lot of the campaign's materials are provided to students to use on social media to hopefully engage a larger audience. And so we've compiled a social media toolkit with infographics, Instagram posts, Facebook posts, banners, and more to help spread the word about the campaign and the upcoming voter registration drive. Each week of the campaign has an activity that focuses on social media engagement. And so we're asking the students to post a few of the campaign's social media posts throughout the week on their group social media site or on their personal social media site. And we've compiled the social media toolkit materials into what we're calling campaign series. So these short social media series will focus on the campaign itself, the history of voting in America, the importance of voting municipally, social work and voting rights, and then a, a series with quick facts called the Did You Know series. We've put together some samples of these series to give you an idea about what we mean. So first is the intro to the campaign series. And these are intended to be used on Instagram but can be modified to be used on other social media forums. And they're intended to be posted to the students' pages to educate their audiences on the importance of voting to the social work profession to our clients and to our communities. The Vote Municipal series focuses on the importance of voting locally. We wanted students to know the major impacts that voting locally has on our communities from having access to clean water, uh, access to broadband, affordable housing, transportation, quality education system, and more. The campaign offers students a variety of activities to do to enhance their participation in the campaign. And so we've organized these activities into a campaign calendar. So each week of the campaign has a coinciding calendar that's included in the guide and materials folder for that week. The campaign calendar is filled with scheduled events and activities that are designed to help students get moving toward the voter registration drive, which is intended to be scheduled for the last week of the campaign. As you can see, alongside the campaign guide, the campaign calendar puts everything together to make it easier for students to participate in the campaign and voter registration drive. We are really hoping that social workers across all arenas are able to use this campaign in one way or another. And so we've compiled a few ways that you can utilize the campaign toolkit. Although it was designed with social work students in mind, there are ways for educators and for working professionals to use it as well. But before we look at how educators and working professionals can use it, I wanted to focus on how students can use or modify the campaign. So let's say you don't have a full eight weeks to complete the campaign. 
Feel free to condense the campaign to fit your needs. Simply only do what's necessary to complete the voter registration drive on campus. So for example, you'd fill out the volunteer sign-up sheet and get permission from the university to host the voter registration drive. And then you would set the date for the drive, educate yourselves on the, uh, the voter registration laws in your state. You'd complete the voter registration drive checklist and then just plan for the date of the voter registration drive. If you already have an existing social work group on campus, this would be a really great exercise for you all to do together before the next election. But be sure to keep in mind the timing of your voter registration drive. For example, here in Texas, the new, new voters, um, their, their registration forms have to be turned in at least 30 days before the election in order to be eligible to vote. So be thinking about the timing as you start your planning. Maybe you don't have an already existing or established social work group on campus. Consider grouping together with other student organizations that may support this effort. There are many ways for you to use this tool to make a huge impact on your campus. And for educators, this campaign can be used as a class assignment or as a part of your field education course. You're also welcome to use any of the graphics within the campaign in your lectures or assignments. Perhaps you don't have the capacity to add this as a part of your curriculum. Consider sponsoring a group on campus that's willing to participate. Either way, we hope that this campaign and this tool help you to encourage civic participation amongst your students. And lastly, for the working professionals in the group today, consider using the campaign in your workplace or in your community. Consider partnering with your colleagues to complete the campus and host your own voter registration drive wherever you may be. Again, feel free to condense or modify the campaign to fit your needs. The main goal of the campaign is getting new voters registered. So feel free to use this resource however you see fit to reach that goal. As we've already stated, we as social workers are really well positioned to promote civic engagement and preserve our nation's democracy. We hope that this new free resource empowers you to either jumpstart your efforts around civic engagement or empowers you to take the next step in your efforts around civic engagement. We hope that you join in the efforts of increasing social workers' involvement in civics and politics by participating in our Why Vote campaign. And with that, we will open it up for questions. Thank you for that, Ariel. I, I think there are some questions in the chat that maybe we could start with. One of the first ones was, and I suppose this could be for Ariel. I'm concerned about the laws and regulations around registering voters in my state. How do you recommend we make sure what we're doing is legal or appropriate? Yeah, so there is a state specific, basically a worksheet within the toolkit that you'll download that um, points you to the right direction of a website where it shows you the laws in your state and how to appropriately go about uh, getting voters registered. Um, so there should be materials in the campaign toolkit to kind of guide you in that direction. And can I just add that here at, uh, at uh, Team Speak, we all went and took training to become voting registrars. And we got the training and, and uh, probably in your county, in your state, there's a similar process. But here in Texas, we became um, certified in one county and we can take that certification to any other county in Texas. And, and get certified there as well. So um, as Ariel just said, there's a different states have different processes. So that's just um, look, look up the law in your state. We're not lawyers. <laughs> yeah, and like I said, there is a, a link on that, um, on that form that will bring you to a website that shows you the, the laws in your state. Also in the Voting and Social Work website, it is those kind of links exist and there's lots of information about that will help answer that question as well. I have a, a question and a comment and if you can see me this is it's Terry Mizrahi. I'm happy to be here as uh, one of the co-chair, the co-chair with Mimi of the uh, uh, voting and social work. But I wanted to say something in relation to the spirit of that question, not the letter. 
because we know that absolutely it is our responsibility and we think we're promoting an obligation to register every eligible colleague, read, you know, our constituents, our clients, but there, there can be, and we're in Texas and I don't want, I know the, uh, whether the um, elephant is in the room, you're certainly one of the elephants where there is seemingly active voter, voter suppression. I will say that the Voting is Social Work campaign is first of all, nonpartisan. Please distinguish, I think Ariel, you've sort of implied it, Mimi implied it, but I wanna state the difference between partisan and political. We have an obligation to be political. We are absolutely forbidden and nobody would want to tell somebody what party to register for or vote. That's absolutely um, you know, a critical thing. If the Hatch Act allows everything, there, the Hatch Act being a, a federal act around this uh, concept of who, what's legal, as long as it's not partisan, you're not promoting a, a candidate. Um, and you can have a candidate's forum as long as you invite everybody who's running as well. So you can certainly expose people to the candidates. The, the issue that is some feeling of intimidation in certain states and certain agencies. I hope people on this call are alerted um, and would be exceptions that, you know, we can't do that. So again, the, the thing is respectfully to show people or ask people, as I like to say, where is it? Show me, you know, let's be the show me people. Show me where it says I can't do this. So we just, we have to realize that as Mimi started, the, the climate of the time now is not in general, the expansion of voting rights and access, but the opposite. But social workers, besides changing policies where we can and when we can't, we are the expert negotiators. And whatever it takes to get that client their ID to vote, to register, we're going to do it. It may take 10 steps. They may have to come back 10 times, but that's the social work commitment now. It's not just here's the, here's the form, fill it out, goodbye. This is an active engagement and it's a process, not an event. So we really, we're excited about this because this is geared to students. Field instructors are always looking for these kinds of assignments. If you're a micro student, you need a macro assignment. If you're macro, you want something that's robust and we hope that you'll use this. Okay, so another question is, are tools provided in other languages, especially Spanish? So unfortunately right now, we only have English. We do have an accessible version of the campaign on the website. Um, I think we will try to do a 2.0 of the campaign toolkit to be able to allow for Spanish speakers. Um, so we will be working on that. But just for the 1.0 is in English, we have an accessible version. The 2.0 will be in Spanish. Um, great, okay, and the next, question I might take. Uh, do you also consider doing voter registration drives at citizenship ceremonies? And I can say as a naturalized citizen at my citizenship ceremony, they actually do give you voter registration tools and you can get registered to vote right then. So they do um, give you stuff to fill out your passport and then information to get registered to vote. So that is something the government does uh, when you go through that ceremony. Another question, I think this would be for you, Dr. Hofer. There's a couple of questions about the research, and I'm not sure if you want to address them here or maybe with a follow-up. But the first is, do you have a chart that shows where those um, people who said they were not asked to register to, register to vote are located? And I know- um, I think that was something that um, Mimi mentioned in, in her presentation. Oh, okay. That wasn't from our research, I'm sorry. You had something similar. Mine was who weren't asked, and you had some some number of people who weren't registered or didn't vote. I don't remember which. Yeah. One. Well, so I'll just say I'll, I'll clarify that the, the information that I presented, other than the very first statistic that fifty five percent of young people voted, um, everything else is from just uh, a survey at UT Arlington, and those results have not yet been published. Uh, I'm, I'm still doing analysis, so it may be a while before we get to that, but 
but uh, it's a, a local survey of about 150 of our students. And, and if you're interested, I'm happy to uh, share that later on. Just send me an email. Uh, we can drop that in the chat mm -hmm. with my email address. Okay, so uh, and a second uh, follow-up question to that was, what was the other um, of the reasons people didn't vote because it was the second largest category? That's a great question. And I'd have to go back and look at the, uh, the data to, to find out because that's, you know, whenever you put other and then they, they put, um, you know, just a, a few words, you know, I, I haven't analyzed what all the other ones are, but it's coming. I'm very interested in that same question. <laughs> Jessica, I noticed that someone asked, when does the Why Vote campaign start? And um, uh, this is another thing missing from my slide is that it's, it's already the whole toolkit that Ariel described is posted on in many places, including the Voting and Social Work website. And I think can, Ariel. Yeah, so it, it's available on. It's available on votingassocialwork.org and is a student-led uh, campaign on individual campuses. So it is up to the student organization or group on campus to decide when they wanna do it. So maybe you wanna do it before the next election, or maybe you wanna do it in anticipation of the new year, the new school year, so you wanna do it in the spring. It's up to the student organization to decide when to start it, but it is available for you right now. Great. And how can we support making Election Day a holiday? I think, Mimi and Terry, that might be for you. I don't know. I mean, there may be other people on the call, in the audience yeah. who can answer that, but it has been proposed legislatively, I think, more than once, but I haven't heard it discussed recently. But maybe someone knows more about that than I do. Well, that sounds like a good topic we can dive into a little deeper and then maybe um, distribute some backup information to the group. The other and the other is, is at, in addition to making it a federal holiday, and that would be on, probably in the presidential year. So maybe we have a couple of years till 2024. But in the meantime, what's really what's more important is early voting. And what we want to do, there, you know, I, you know, I was from New York State. And New York didn't didn't have early voting, you know. Um, so some states, even the so-called liberal states or blue states, you know, it, every as you all know, it's fifty different, maybe a thousand different uh, uh, campaign election procedures and policies. And it's not one, of course. But the idea is really to open it up. So one piece is to support a national holiday, but the other is to make sure your state or encourage your state legislators as you bring up all the voting issues with your congressmen and state legislators and county officials, whoever's in charge, um, that you want to open it up. You know, because that, that's the key. You know, a lot of the 2020, while Mimi talked about it as being a flawed year. On the other hand, we had the most voting, we had the most open system, you know, during COVID. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's a, it's a balance, right? And there's some tension. So every, every one of you from the different states will have a different challenge to get as many people registered and to the polls on election day. And we're not going by passing uh, 2021. There are a lot of local elections, mm -hmm. um, including um, in our city in New York, um, and then, of course, in 2022, we're gearing up for that because there are, you know, all the Congress people are up and one third of the senators. I would also, um, you know, to think about it, on your campus, maybe you feel like it's a little too early before the election to get started, but it probably isn't. And maybe you can use some of the informational tools before you actually start doing things that the calendar tells you to do for an actual drive. And also, I think that you might also think about, if you haven't already done so, finding a group of students, you can't do this by yourself. So finding a group of students that who are interested uh, uh, to work with you and talk to your dean or your agency director. Uh, Ariel tells you to do all this in her guide, but I'm just emphasizing it now. 
um, so that um, you have their permission way ahead of time, whether it's setting up a table in the lobby or having a speaker at orientation or many different ways. You want to get people thinking about the election long before the elections take place. So when voter registration comes up, it's not like, oh yeah, there's an election going on, you know, because that's what happens to most people, not just campus people, people all over the country. So what Voting the Social Work wants to do is we want to start educating people about civic engagement and about the need to register to vote, about what's happening to our country. So I'm sure there's lots of pieces in that guide that you can use in advance of yeah you make a great point and there was a question about it says 22 states allow same day registration and voting uh would you alter the campaign in a specific way for these states and i would say as mimi said most of the beginning part of the campaign is just education and getting people excited and getting the word out that you're gonna host your voter registration drive um, so really it's up to you on how you want to structure the campaign. So it's up to you and your group. Um, but there are ways to condense the campaign that you, you know, you don't have the full eight weeks or you don't want to complete the full eight weeks. Um, you can piece together those, those pieces together. But that beginning part is really all about um, advocacy, about why voting matters and just getting the word out about, um, you know, that the election day is coming up and we need to get people registered. So and I'd like to jump in and just emphasize the importance of local elections. Um, I mean, there are so many people who don't even bother with that, yet there's a concerted effort by um, certain people to take over school boards and county commissioners and these other so-called you know, local and, and you know, un uninteresting races. But that's where a lot of decisions are being made like the critical race theory flap is all being done at school boards. And, and who are the people on the school board? Most people couldn't name them. So uh, we, we should not ignore that level of government and voting because it makes a lot of difference in our own lives and the lives of our family members. Also, you know, this is a, it's the build as a student driven campaign, but if you're in an agency, you can replace the word student with staff. And, um, and this, this whole project can be done, adapted for agency. So if you're in schools and, and you wanna work with your field department and they wanna go beyond their students or help their students work with people in the field, in the agencies, you know, in the community, I, I think that um, it's recognize that flexibility in, in, the, in the guide. And also I think, um, we want to emphasize anything in terms of voting right now. The voters, we want to get the, the voting rights bill passed. That's one thing that people are legislatively involved. The, the latest one that's been proposed is not the strongest, but we should support it. And we also want to, um, wherever possible, vote against, I mean, f work against voter suppression because um, if we don't have the, a bill and we don't, we don't have a voting rights bill, we don't have, and we allow voter suppression, there's not much, for, we can't have much of an impact. So we really have to work on those things or get to people who are and, and support them. Okay, just to stay uh, respectful of everyone's time, there was a question about following the results of your study, Dr. Hofer. So what I will say is we will, um, we are sending out the follow-up email. So just respond to that email if you'd like to be kept up to date on our um, survey study and we can put together a group um, that we can send some updates to. We did just recently expand it from just UTA students to nationally. It's just been sent out. So feel free to forward that link to any students you know. We would love to get as many as possible into the study. Any other questions, feel free to email uh, speak at uta.edu. Uh, it will be added to the chat. But watch your email in the next couple of days for the uh, link to the recording if you want to share anyone with that. And we will include those additional materials and the slides from today. And um, of course, visiting the Voting and Social Work website and reaching us through social media. 
and we hope everyone enjoys the rest of their week. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Thank you.